our mind is teachable because it utilizes the brain which is infinitely programmable if you are willing to practice sufficiently you can teach this brain literally anything whatever be our profession work or craft we all aspire to become expert in it and do it to the best of our ability hence it will be extremely helpful for us to understand the process of learning and the pathway to mastery this was the year 1924 a hotel room had been divided into two on one side were 26 players on the other side was one russian grandmaster alexander alikhain these players were all playing alexander alikhain together the only difference was they all could see their pieces on their chess boards while alikhain could see none Every time a player made a move a runner would come up to him and inform him that on this board this piece has been moved from such and such square to such and such square Alexander Alikhain would write out his response and the runner would go and make that move This display of blindfold chess went on for 12 hours at a stretch with only a short dinner break in between Alikhain made no notes he had no references he was keeping 26 boards 832 pieces 1664 squares in his mind at the same time when it finally ended he had won 16 of those games lost 5 and drawn 5 in the best display of blindfold chess ever how did he develop this tremendous ability it all started when he was a school student he would take chess problems to school he could not take the board so he would write out the problem or take it in his mind and keep working on it until the day came when he could play a whole game without looking he realized he had the talent and ability to be one of the best players in the world in 1914 alongside with many other grandmasters he was in berlin for a tournament when germany declared war on france and russia and these chess grandmasters were arrested how to pass the time they started playing blindfold chess with each other subsequently when he was released and returned to russia he joined the red cross on the battleground he was injured by the austrian army and he was arrested and taken by them since his back had been hurt they tied him up to the bed what to do now again he continued playing blindfold chess after the war was over in 1921 he emigrated to france he needed money to take care of himself and as a way of earning he started giving demonstration games of blindfold chess playing many opponents together until the game of 1924 when he set the world record with 26 opponents subsequently from 1927 to 1946 for 20 years at a stretch with a tiny break 
he reigned as the world chess champion and he is ranked as one of the top 10 chess players in history. Having read and heard about this set me wondering, how is it that chess grandmasters can keep full games in their mind? The answer is, our mind is teachable because it utilizes the brain which is infinitely programmable. The secret to success always lies within us. External resources may be scarce. Social support may be missing. Situations may be difficult and challenging. But each of us has a gold mine within. And if only we know how to mine it for gold, we can definitely find success in our life. And that gold mine is the power of thoughts, which nobody can ever take away from us. Kalpana Saroj was a poor little girl born in the village of Roper Kheda in Akola district of Maharashtra. When she was 12 years old, social pressure became immense for her marriage as was the tradition in that poor society. Her father could not resist. After marriage, she began living in her husband's home in a slum in Mumbai. She had heard that in her community, married life was awful, but she was not prepared for what was going to happen. A family of 10, she was practically cleaning, cooking, doing the laundry for all of them. Worst of all, they were sadists and for the slightest of excuses, they would beat her and torture her. Fortunately, her father came to see her after six months and was astounded to see her emaciated form. He took her back and there she was practically ostracized for a woman who had returned home after marriage. She thought of putting an end to her life rather than bringing shame to her family. She procured three bottles of insecticide and drank them all, enough to be killed. Fortunately, her aunt entered the room at that time and saw her splurging. She was rushed to the hospital. 24 hours later, when she came out, Kalpana made a decision. She thought, if I am still alive, I must utilize this opportunity and I must do something significant and meaningful. She did not have the resources. She did not have the education, but she had the thoughts. She had tapped in to the inner gold mine. She had begun the process of external transformation by uplifting her inner ideas. Again, she wanted to go to Mumbai and pleaded before her mother who refused. She threatened to commit suicide a second time, this time by laying over the railway track. Finally, the mother conceded and as a 16-year-old, she went back to Mumbai, stayed in a relative's home and started work as a tailor in a garment factory. Her father lost her job and she decided she would support them all. She got an apartment on rent and called them over. It were tough times, but at least they were together. Her sister fell ill and they didn't have the money for her treatment. And the sister said, please save me. Those words remained with Kalpana and she decided at that time money was important and she would not let this situation happen again. 
can you believe that today she is on the board of directors of one of the most prestigious MBA colleges in India, the IIM Bangalore? How did it happen? It's a very strange and interesting unfoldment of events. She came to know of a government loan for poor women entrepreneurs. She got 50,000 as loan and started her own tailoring business. Subsequently, she procured a second loan and got a furniture business where she was making high-end furniture at cheap levels. That is where she honed her entrepreneurial skills, how to deal with the difficult environment around. Later on, uh, Kamani Enterprises, a big corporate house, was in trouble. And rather than letting it go into liquidation, it was handed over to the workers. The worker unions made a mess out of it, only wanting to make a fast buck. By then, Kalpana Saroj had become famous as a powerful entrepreneur. She was approached by one group of workers and requested to help out. She put together a team of consultants, each expert in their work, and made a proposal to the bank. The bank said they would agree if she would take over as CEO. Subsequently, she became the head of that organization. She managed to liquidate all the loans, pay back all the debts, all the dues of the workers and steered the company to where it is today. A 1000 crore rupee industry. Fat Kalpana Saroj defied what people say and feel Oh, you know, I'm not born with success. She said, if we are willing to work hard and stick on, some path definitely opens up. It's not the degrees you get in Ivy League colleges that makes a good entrepreneur. Rather, it is your ability to work hard with great passion. Now, she opened up NGOs to prevent what happened to her to happen to other poor girls in her community. And she wishes to adopt her own village and lift it out of poverty. Here is an example of someone who illustrated what I always say the power of thoughts. Success lies not on the outside, but within us. This mind is always the cause of bondage and liberation. As little children of the infinite God, we all have infinite potential. The only thing stopping us is our own thoughts. So break the glass ceiling. Let loose your highest sublime ideas. Follow through with passion, dedication and hard work and you will definitely succeed in leading your best life. You have all heard of the German musician Mozart. So Mozart was such a child prodigy that at the age of four, he was composing music and at the age of seven, he undertook a tour of Europe where he thrilled audiences because he was hardly visible above the harp C chord and he was playing like people had never heard. And Mozart had another trick up his sleeve. He had the ability called absolute pitch. 
absolute pitch is the ability to hear a note and identify it. This is A sharp, this is C minor, without any reference scale. Now that is not easy. So it is said one out of 5,000 people have the ability for absolute pitch. Their brains are so configured. And it is such a talent that either you have it, you are born with it, or you are not born with it. Beethoven, the other famous German musician, did not have it. So not even world-class musicians possess absolute pitch, but Mozart did. So, is it a God-given ability? Seems like. However, in the year 2012, a Japanese teacher called Ayako Sakakibara of the Ichion Gai Music School went about disproving this. She gathered 24 children and said, I will help you develop absolute pitch. The children from the ages of 2 to 6, those 24 children were requested, we need just 4 to 5 minutes of your time, 5 times a day. So 5 times a day they would have to practice, they would be given a note to recognize and a reference scale. The consequence was at the end of 55 weeks, 22 out of the 24 children developed absolute pitch. Where one out of 5,000 in the world have this ability, here 24 children picked out from school had a success rate of 22 out of 24. How do you explain this? And the two who could not develop absolute pitch were the two who had dropped out of the course. So it was actually a 100% success rate. That goes to show that this brain can be trained. It has got these 100 billion neurons that can wire together to create trillions of circuits providing you with musical intelligence, mathematical intelligence, visual intelligence, verbal intelligence. It's just a question of practice, practice, practice and the neurons that fire together, they wire together. Now, why are little children able to pick it up so quickly? The reason is that the little children have less neurons than the adults. The neurons keep increasing till the age of 12. After that, there is no increase in neurons. But the little children have got far more axons than the adults, which connect the neurons, which enable the formation of circuits. And that is why the grasping ability of a little child is so immense. Between the ages of three to four, a child picks up a language in a year's time just by hearing. Now you as an adult try and do that. It will be not an easy feat. Because those additional axons have disappeared. So children are able to develop this absolute which anybody can be trained for it. In fact, after this experiment study was announced, adults said that we will also try to develop. Of course, they could not do it in 55 weeks, maybe they did it in 5.5 years, but subsequently many adults announced that I have also developed it. This is the infinite teachability of this human brain. If you are willing to practice sufficiently, you can teach this brain literally anything. And that applies to the spiritual realm as well. So Lord Krishna says, Abhyas, 
Maharshi Patanjali in his Yoga Sutra, he says the same thing. Abhyasa vairagya abhyam tannirodhaha. Look, practice, practice, practice. Kripaluji Maharaj said, look, if you wish to do Rubdhyan meditation and first day you can only succeed for one minute out of ten. Don't worry, keep on practicing. After one week, you will be doing two minutes out of ten. After two weeks, you'll be doing three minutes out of ten. And after five weeks, you will be succeeding in meditating five minutes out of ten. And once you have reached the 50% limit, then after that, it's so easy. The mind then naturally goes to God. So, this brings us to the ability of the brain to be programmed. And that enables us to create habits.